This video discusses how to adjust the Panzas Warren Auto Drive when it's attached to a Dillon 1050 Super. And let me introduce you to the stars of our show. This is the index lever cam. I call it the finger because it looks like a finger. And this is the index roller. I call it the nub. Obviously, I've got some explaining to do. The point I'll be trying to make with this entire video is that the auto drive is indeed adjustable, but the range that we have to choose from is very, very small. Although the goal of the auto drive is to fully index the shell plate, it turns out that you need to look under the hood to find out what is really going on and how to adjust it. A shell plate that doesn't move is useless. This one isn't much better, and a reloading press that vibrates too much will cause your bullets to topple. If you're getting any shell plate movement at all, you're through adjusting swivel left and swivel right, and all adjustments should be made with the adjustment screw only. On the auto drive, this is the sway bar, the rotating arm, the clutch screws, the stub shaft, the rocker arm, swivel left, swivel right, the adjustment screw, which is really a bolt, the black collar, the black collar nut, the finger, this is the nub, I also may use the terms the nub's high point and low point. When a shell plate fails to index, I say it slips. When you perform a finger test and the finger is pinched, I refer to that as the nub's pinch point. While you're adjusting things and your shell plate goes from indexing fully to slipping, I call that the nub's slip point. When dealing with the auto drive, learn to make small adjustments. Half turns or even quarter turns are much too large in most cases. Since there are six faces on the adjustment screw, I won't say turn the adjustment screw 60 degrees. I'll say make an adjustment by one face. Let's start by taking a snapshot of your current drive's measurements. First, swivel left. Measure from the swivel left's collar to the shoulder of the sway bar. Next, measure swivel right from its collar to the sway bar. And third, from the end of the adjustment screw to the black collar. Save a ton of time and talking. I'm going to refer to the following procedure as the finger test. To perform a finger test, check your shell plate and bump your drive's motor forward and back. And stop when you find the nub's absolute high point. It's all done by trial and error, but one peak will clearly stick out. Inspect the displacement of the fingers for the end. This simple test will tell you everything you need to know about what to do next regarding further adjustments. Also note, the more you turn the adjustment screw out, increases the nub's high point, and conversely, the more you turn it in, decreases the nub's high point. And just so you know, that has the same effect of increasing and decreasing the manual crank handle's top to bottom throw. We're finally getting to the heart of the matter, how to adjust your auto drive. To adjust it, we need to find your auto drive's pinch point, which will also be the nub's highest possible position, then its slip point, and this represents your entire adjustable range. On my auto drive, this range is only five face turns. So generally speaking, the setting I'm looking for is two and a half face turns, which would logically be halfway. To adjust it, perform a finger test. And if your finger is not pinched, go ahead and let out the adjustment screw until you get a pinched finger. We're not going to leave it there. We're going to start there. Finding the nub slip point is even easier Turn the adjustment screw in until you observe the shell plate beginning to slip. Tracking how far you adjusted is vital. Mark a face on the bolt so you can keep track of the number of faces that you turn. While we're here at the pinch point with zero deflection in our finger, I thought we should talk about literally getting a feel for things. I think you'll agree, every time the nub pinches that finger, it has the potential to cause your bullets to topple. So even though our shell plate is fully indexing, let's loosen things up a bit and see if we can't get a little smoother setting. Adjust one face in. Another finger test will reveal on my auto drive that the finger is still pinched. Let's keep going one face in. Now at face turn two, the finger is no longer in tension from the nub. 
and there's about a sixteenth inch deflection. Let's keep going one face in. At face turn three, four, and five, things would just continue to loosen up. Face turn six finally reveals my slip point. Your auto drive might be a little different, but let's not leave it here in this condition. Let's back it out one face and get our shell plate indexing again. Here are some photos of why I'm reluctant to leave an auto drive in its slipped condition. By doing so, the swage station has the potential of coming up and making mincemeat out of your shell plate. In fact, you may want to disable your swaging station when you perform these adjustments, but that's up to you. Anyway, make note of your slip point, cut your adjustment range in half, and that should be your auto drive's sweet spot. I think you can see why I eliminate faces 0 and 1 because of pinched fingers, as well as face 5 because of potential shell plate damage. So that limits our adjustment range to faces 2, 3, and 4. And I have to tell you, even though my calculated sweet spot is at 2.5 to 3, I tend to run my auto drive at around face 4. And that's because the auto drive speed is not adjustable. I'm trying to run my auto drive actually as slow as possible. And you may have to factor in the throw of your reloading press as stated earlier. I've got one more thing to say about the adjustment screw. If your sway bar is tapping the clutch screws on its way by, then turn out your adjustment screw by a fraction. It's a feather adjustment until that tapping goes away. Now that you're adjusted, it'd be a great time to retake those three measurements, but only the adjustment screw dimension should have changed. A well-adjusted auto drive will have the same relative dimensions on the left and right side of the sway bar, in other words, centered, and the tension in the sway bar will be relatively the same throughout a full cycle. Also check the alignment of the sway bar. It should be a straight line. So there you have it, the auto drive's adjustment screw. I'm going to have to put changing the auto drive's swivel left and swivel right into a separate video. This video ran longer than I intended.